Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim and today I'm continuing my playthrough of Knights over Stalingrad. Well, sort of. Uh, what I'm actually doing is re-recording uh, the end of the previous episode uh, from where I made a crucial mistake uh, during the final combat sequence. Uh, so I've rolled things back to that point. Uh, you may have seen in the comments of the previous uh, episode uh, a couple of the mistakes I made. One of them not that big, the other one pretty huge. So uh, we're going to correct those now. Uh, so basically this is going to replace the results uh, of the last mission from this point forward. Uh, so the issue, well, the first thing was, uh, when I got to initiative box eight here, um, for some reason I had this guy land first, uh, obviously these two go before him. So since they have nothing to do, they won't choose to strafe the airfield. Uh, they're just going to pass. Uh, at that point then, this uh, transport did successfully pass their landing check. I had put them here, but I think I'm actually just going to put them up here in the cauldron or friendly airfields box. Uh, however, I kind of went back and forth on whether uh, these fighters could then engage a landed transport. <laughs> And at first I was having them do that, which was actually correct. Uh, but then I went back and checked the rules again, and I was actually looking in the wrong section of the rules, which was what the problem was, uh, thinking that, no, they aren't able to do that. But in fact, uh, in the section under strafing attacks for fighters, uh, it says non-human Fighters will not strafe an airfield target or ground target in order to avoid flak damage, but will attack landed bombers or transports if no other airborne targets are available. Uh, so these last two fighters here will indeed go after uh, this transport that's on the ground. Uh, so I'm just going to move them to here for that, and they will... Uh, undergo the uh, black attack then from the airfield and then assuming they survive uh, they uh, they will go after the landed transport uh, now this guy actually has a wingman and I believe I think I asked this question previously, and I believe the answer was that both are subject to the black attacks. In fact, I think I think something was added to the rules to that effect. Let me see if I can find that. I'm also not sure whether or not they both. Uh, attack the ground target uh, or the landed aircraft in this case or if only the lead does okay I do see here where it says the defensive bonus does not apply for head-on attacks flak attacks or for bomber transport dorsal gunner return fire Here we go. When a lead attacks a ground target, the wingman attacks the same target. If the lead destroys the target, the wingman's attack is negated. They do not attack a new target. Uh, that should probably be expanded to include landed aircraft as well. I assume it would be the same. All right. What I did find, though, is that when you attack... landed aircraft uh, they suffer damage the same as if they were in flight so we'll be rolling 
you know, the hits and then pulling the damage to, to see how much damage they actually get. The only exception is once they're damaged, uh, they don't do a damage check at that point. If they receive additional damage, they're just only destroyed if once their damage uh, reaches their pilot experience level. And the pilots of safely landed aircraft are not killed or injured. They're assumed to have already left, and it's just the plane sitting there on the tarmac. All right, so now that we have all that sorted, uh, let's do this flak attack against uh, each of these. So we'll do the lead first. So three D8s. An eight is going to be a hit, a level B hit. Uh, that's a miss, and that's a miss. So we get one level B hit against them, which is going to do three damage. Damage check. Uh, pass. So he will then attack the landed aircraft with a d12 and misses. Okay, then his wingman, three flak attacks, miss, miss, miss. Must be at least a seven. Also, uh, light clouds, I think is giving them a minus one, right? Yes. So actually, that 8 that we rolled on the named ace was actually a 7, so it should have been a level C hit. Uh, don't remember what that chip had for level C, but I'm going to say it was a 1. He's got one damage. All right. Um, so completely missed this guy. He's going to attack the landed transport and misses. Okay. And then the screen pilot is going to come in, take three flak attacks. Miss. Uh, that's a miss because of the light clouds. Basically, we have to get an 8. And that's a miss. Uh, and he will attack the landed aircraft. Misses. Alright. On to round 3. Uh, we'll do the aces first. Uh, so our guy who has the... Uh, Tactician ability gives him a plus one for this roll, so d12 plus nine, 17. Do their named ace next, d12 plus six is 12, and then d12 plus six is nine. Uh, let's see, two D eight or D ten plus eight, seventeen and sixteen, a D ten plus five, thirteen, and oh, we missed an ace over here. D twelve plus six, that's gonna be at fourteen. We've got two experienced fighters here. D8s for each of them. It'll be 12 and 13. And then a D6 plus 6, 8. All right. Let's see what we can do. This one's going to attack here. D12. 
missed. Same target with the D10. One hit. Two damage. Damage check. Fails. Nice. And another D10. Finish this guy off. One more hit. Uh, two. Mm. Yeah, there's all this, and then something just popped into my head. Uh, so two more damage here. Damage check. Yes. Uh, turn it. Okay, so he's done. Roll for this ace. See if he bails out. He does. Does he escape? He does. <clears throat> All right. What just popped into my head is, I believe. <clears throat> I know for a fact, at least for ground attacks, um, in light clouds, there is a minus one die roll modifier. I can find where that is. Attack ground targets. I thought there was. Oh yeah, here it is. Ground target attack table. Yeah, it's in the ground target attack table. Um, although, we're not using the ground target attack table. Because we're attacking them as if they're in the air. So, does the... Minus one DRM for light clouds and the minus two DRM for heavy clouds. Um, still apply for attacking landed aircraft. Oh, here it is. Under 8.10.6. All weather modifiers apply to landed aircraft on the ground. Fog attacks are NA, light clouds, minus 1 DRM, heavy clouds, minus 2 DRM. Yeah, so those attacks should have had a minus 1 DRM applied. Fortunately, they both missed anyway. We definitely need to keep that in mind going forward. All right, here we're going to do a... A head-on attack. So we get a D10. They get a D8. Two hits. All right. Let's take this guy out. Four. And four. Yes. He's going to be destroyed. Let's resolve his attack back on us first. He missed. All right, so destroyed. Roll for the pilot. He bails out and he evades capture. This one's done. All right, well, we got to survive four, well, actually five, five shots on our... Uh, Landed transport here. So starting with our ace, which this is his damage. Um, black attacks with a minus one. So we need an eight. Miss, miss, miss. And then his attack also with a minus one. Ooh, that's going to be two hits. Three and two is five. <clears throat> D 
damage check. All right, um, he's done. Oh, his wingman. Three flak attacks, missed, hit, missed. So a level C hit for one damage. And damage check, passed. So attack with a minus one DRM. Two more hits. Yikes. That's going to be all she wrote. Three and three. It's toast. Roll. Uh, no, we don't need to roll for the pilots there. They've already evacuated the plane. Um, so, yeah, that's going to do it. These will not choose to strafe the airfield. And ended up a whole lot worse than we thought. <clears throat> All right. Oh, and for some reason in the first uh, go around here in the previous episode, I counted this named ace as having been damaged and he in fact was not. So that was also off. All right, let's get this right this time, though. Okay, so we lost four uh, transports at four points each, so that's negative 16. Uh, we had three of the pilots either captured or killed, so that's another three. Uh, so... So that's uh, 16 and then another 3, so we're at negative 19. Uh, all of the supplies were destroyed, which was, uh, what was that again? 4. Um, destroyed supplies. Air transport, yeah, three points for each. Well, that's another 12. That puts us at negative 31. And then for us, we had um, these. Okay, we had one pilot captured. So that's two, four, six, seven for that, and then nothing damaged on this side. So seven points for us puts us at negative 24. So we were at uh, 19. So negative 24 plus 19 is going to be negative 5, I think. Yeah, 19 and 5 is 24. Yep, so we're at negative 5. <clears throat> All right. And then all these Russians can go away. This can go away. We need to clear these labels off. Again. And this one, and all these damage markers can go. It's already flipped to the right side, so this can all go back to the deck. 
And we have our heavy fighter that's going to stay with us. We have our fighter that's going to stay with us. And then these two are the ones that are going to land here. It's going to go back. So if you recall, um, additional escorts land at Gumrack when mission complete, technically when combat complete. Um, and they do have to roll, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <clears throat> non-squadron, but I believe they still do have to roll. Landing at or airfield landing. Damaged Axis fighters. The player does not receive the return to base penalty for landing in a friendly airfield, but squadron and non squadron aircraft must roll for a safe landing, suffering any mission points. Uh, we actually rolled for them before, so I'm just going to stick with those results and. They both landed safely, if I remember correctly. Um, it's going to send them back to the deck. And this can go back to the deck. All right. So. Now, at this point, we had decided previously that rather than try to make it back, to Morosovsky with these two, that uh, they would just land here as well. And both of those landing checks were successful as well, I believe. I'm not going to reroll those either. Um, this one just goes back to the deck. This one, because we landed at an airfield that's not our home airfield, will be delayed for a day. So he's going to come back with that other one that landed at uh, Potomac, I believe. Or no, that, yeah, that was landed at Potomac. Um, yeah. So that's going to end the mission there. <clears throat> So, a little bit different situation here than we had before. As it stands right now, we only have one available aircraft. So, I believe now is the time to use this All Is Not Lost card. Uh, it can be played after returning from a mission in which the player scored negative mission points. We can spend up to five mission points to replace pilots and or repair aircraft. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to spend three to repair these three. Uh, one of which is this guy's aircraft, so he can go away now. Uh, so that's three points spent, and then we can also spend uh, two to replace an aircraft. So we'll draw a new uh, 109. Let's see, we're already at our limit of three. Or no, actually we did lose what, a gunboat. So we could draw a gunboat as a replacement or a gondola. Uh, so we're gonna do that. <clears throat> All right, so that's this card used. We'll have to spend uh, our negative five mission points to lose two campaign points. Now, negative two campaign points. But fortunately, there's none left over after that, so we don't have to lose any of our banked mission points. 
All right, we're down to one dogfight card, so we can draw a new one. And we got to break. Uh, actually, you know what? What was that? I remember. I'd actually done this at the end of the last mission, so I might as well keep this the same as well. Um, what was the one that I drew? It was... Some kind of... It was Long Burst. That's what it was. Take that one again. That's what we drew before. And our post-mission card that we drew was Camaraderie. Uh, which allowed us to draw another dogfight card. And that one was one that was similar to this Hartman Escape. Let me see if I can remember the name of it. Uh, hmm. the defensive spiral. It was definitely an avoid attack and break off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is what it was. If not, it has the same effect as whatever it was that I drew. So we'll go with that. So that was our post-mission card that we drew. And other than that, I think anything else should be correct. We're not missing anything here. Mission points, post-mission. Yep, I think we're good. So, turned out quite a bit worse. In hindsight, I definitely should have landed all of the transports at the Tomnik. But, uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. I got greedy, wanted to get those three points for landing them instead of, uh, yeah, it's tough. With all those fighters, you're, you know, they're going right after the transports, and then even if you land them, they're, they're still going after them. So, really tough to get them on the ground. Definitely something to keep in mind if we're in that situation again. We can go away. We're all good here. We can remove this. We can remove this. We can send this back to here. Remove that, turn that to the deck, and advance the turn marker. All right, so I think that corrects all of my mistakes that I made at the end of the previous episode. So with that, we'll wrap things up for this episode of Knights Over Stalingrad. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Leave comments. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.